Hey everybody, Arizona attorney David Ina Volton here, and in this video I want to talk to you about attorney's fees provisions in a settlement agreement in a family court case in Arizona. Now there's a couple different components to this, and first off, as a backdrop, you need to understand how attorney's fees work in a family court case in Arizona. Those are governed by ARS 25324, that's our statute that talks about attorney's fees, and generally there's two ways in which you can be awarded attorney's fees in a family court case. And when I say family court case, just to be clear, I'm talking about divorces, custody fights, that sort of thing. Those two provisions that are the two different ways in which you can get attorney's fees are number one, if there's a significant financial disparity between the parties, and number two, if there is one of the parties has been taking unreasonable positions throughout the case. So just by way of example, the financial disparity could be a situation where you have somebody that's making, say, minimum wage or isn't working at all, and the other party in the case is making, say, $150,000 a year. Because there's such a huge disparity in between those two financial resources that each one has, the theory is that we don't want to put people in a situation where they're just blown over by somebody that has more money and they're able to afford an attorney and the other person isn't. Second situation there is unreasonable cond or unreasonable positions within the case, and that generally ties to if you're forcing someone to go through litigation and there's no reason for it, if you're just taking blatantly unreasonable positions, the court has the ability to go in and award attorney's fees. Now there's def a different piece of this that's also important in understanding how the attorney's fees interplay with settlement agreements, and that revolves around this idea of merger versus non-merger. Merger is the idea that you have a settlement agreement and you merge it into the decree. That is to say, it's a separate document and it's usually attached to the decree. But in the language of the decree and in the language of the settlement agreement, you basically describe that even though it's a separate document, you're merging it in and it becomes one with the decree. That is to say, it's not its own separate thing, it's just one big piece of, of complete order. Now in contrast, you have another situation which is not merging this separate agreement. And what happens there is you have the separate agreement, but it retains its own independent character as a contract. So it doesn't become one with the decree, it doesn't merge into it, it doesn't meld and become a single thing. It is still its own separate agreement and the order basically just acknowledges its existence. This is important for a couple of reasons. One is it's going to tell you if you need to enforce this. Let's say somebody's breaching the agreement, they're breaching the contract, violating the terms of whatever that agreement says where are you going to go to enforce it? If you are merging it, that means you go, you just have an order, which means you go back to the family court. If you are not merging it, you have a contract, which means you have to sue someone civilly as though that they breached any other contract that's out there. The important piece for all of this is that when you have a merger situation, that is to say that the, the separate agreement has become one with the decree, the court can't order something that it wouldn't otherwise have the ability to do. Now, let's wrap back for a second to the attorney's fees provision that we talked about at the beginning. Under Arizona law, we've got those two situations in which you can award attorney's fees. Now, what a lot of people will try to do, a lot of attorneys even do this, is they'll put a provision into the, the agreement, this property settlement agreement, that says, if somebody breaches the agreement, then the prevailing party or the person that breached the agreement there's, there's an, a liability for attorney's fees because of the breach. That is to say that the breaching party has to pay back those attorney's fees to the person that isn't breaching. But if you've merged it, that doesn't comply with what the ARS 25324 says, which is basically that you have to have either a financial disparity or an unreasonable position. So there's actually a case law out there that says, in essence, that particular provision in a situation where you've merged the decree if you're asking for attorney's fees be built into the agreement in such a way that it would be awarded to the prevailing party, you can't enforce that provision. In those situations, you're gonna to have to default back to the normal provision that we have under ARS 25324. So there's a couple important pieces here, takeaways to walk with. Number one, if you're drafting a settlement agreement then and a consent decree that's built into that, make sure that you're aware of how that is gonna play out because you might think you have a provision in there that's enforceable when in fact you don't. Second is if somebody's trying to enforce a settlement agreement against you and is asking for attorney's fees, be aware that you have to default to the underlying positions of 25324, the financial disparity or reasonable positions. So just be careful when you're drafting your agreements and watch for those specific things. As always, if you need help, please talk to a licensed family law attorney in Arizona.